Hi everyone, it's me John Waite and I'm back yet again on the Waitrose channel. You just can't get rid of me, can you? Today I've got a recipe which I've made for our incredible monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, to celebrate, of course, her platinum jubilee. It's a queen of puddings cake, so it's a beautiful custard sponge with gorgeous jam, amazing custard, and finished with a jelly Italian meringue frosting. It's a bit of a beast, certainly is a masterpiece, but I'll tell you something, for our queen, it's worth the effort. The first thing I'm gonna do is make the cake itself. This is a basic sponge with a little bit of a twist. It's got a bit of custard powder in there to give it a lovely color and a slight subtle hint of custard flavor. So I'm gonna put the sugar into the mixer first and then in with the butter. And while this mixes, if you want to peruse the full recipe, you can get it via the link in the video description. Right, so the sugar and butter are creamed and fluffy and pale and fabulous and any other adjective you want to insert there. Okay, I just want to heat a little bit of milk. While that's microwaving, I'll just have a quick scrape down over the sides of the bowl. Thank you. So I can now add the eggs to the mixture. So I'm going to put it on a low medium speed and then cracking the eggs one at a time. The mixture looks pretty split. And that's completely normal. That's simply because the egg yolks haven't emulsified into the butter. And there's nothing to be worried about. That's a very, very normal part of making a cake. But that's where the hot milk comes in because if I add the hot milk to that now, it might, might not, but it probably will emulsify everything. No, didn't emulsify. Am I gonna lose sleep over it? Absolutely not. Because all I need to do now is add the final few dry ingredients. And I'm just going to weigh out my dry ingredients. There's some self-raising flour, and I'm gonna put some custard powder into this as well. And even though I've used self-raising flour, I'm gonna add a little bit more of a lift with some baking powder. And you can't make a cake without giving it some flavor through salt. And then just sieve those together. Thank you, sieve. So I'm gonna add a third of the dry ingredients to the buttery, unemulsified mixture, and not bitter. And then just before that's fully incorporated, I'll add the rest of it. So I've got here my eight inch or 20 centimeter cake tins. So divide the mixture between the tins as evenly as you want. If you want us to weigh the mixture and then weigh it, divide it perfectly, be my guest but I think on a day like today when the sun is shining, life is far too short for that. And what was a split, unemulsified mess is now a glorious, smooth, velvety, golden batter. So all is right with the world again. Okay, I'm just gonna smooth these out a little bit and then I'm gonna put these into the oven and they'll take between 20 and 25 minutes to bake just until a skewer inserted into the center of each cake comes out clean. Now to fill this cake masterpiece, I'm gonna make a thick custard or a creme patissiere. It's quite easy to make. It's a little bit stagey, but follow these steps and you'll be absolutely fine. 300 grams of whole milk. And then to the milk, I'm gonna add just half of the full quantity of sugar. And also to the milk, I'm gonna add the seeds of a vanilla pod. And I'm actually gonna add the whole pod to that as well because any little seeds that are clinging on for dear life, We'll get those out too. And then that can go onto the hob, just on a medium heat for now until I'm ready. And if, of course, you don't have a vanilla pod, you could use vanilla extract, vanilla bean paste, or the real deal, the pod itself. And you can't make a custard without eggs. So I want the egg yolks in this bowl, and I need the whites in this bowl for later. Don't worry, the whites are gonna get used, and they're gonna get used today. So I've got my egg yolks here, I'm gonna add my remaining sugar to them. And I'll give those a little whisk together now. And then to thicken the custard, you could use corn flour, which is customary really for creme patissiere. Corn flour or plain flour is fine. But just to give it a bit more of a vibrant color and flavor, I'm actually gonna use custard powder. And it's really important that you get rid of any lumps of custard powder now, because as soon as I add this to the hot milk, those lumps will turn rubbery and they won't dissolve. So get rid of them while you can. So my egg yolks, sugar, and custard powder are mixed together in that bowl. In my hob, I've got my milk, my vanilla, and a little bit of that sugar as well. The milk is simmering and about to boil, so I'm gonna take it over to my egg mixture, and I'm gonna pour that, hang on, before I do, 
Top tip, to stop the ball from spinning around as I pour the milk into it, I'm gonna put a damp tea towel just underneath it. This is called a liaison in French because the hot milk is meeting the cold eggs. Sounds very romantic, doesn't it? Okay, I'm gonna give that a good mix in the bowl. And then that all gets poured back into the pan, off the heat for now. Now, take a few deep breaths, get yourself ready. Because as soon as this goes back onto the hob on high heat, you have to whisk it like the clappers. If at any point you stop whisking this pan, you take the pan off the heat. And I know I sound very serious and matronly as I tell you this, but I don't want you to burn your custard. Ready? Let's whisk. So really whisk it as it thickens and then stop. Okay. Whew. Take a deep breath and carry on. So I've got here a clean plate. And I'm gonna pour the custard onto that plate in one gorgeous thick lump. And then it's very, very important that you don't let a skin form on this custard. So cover it either with cling film, or I prefer to use a piece of baking paper. And make sure that the baking paper or cling film is touching the surface of the custard. And that is a perfect creme patissiere. I'm gonna leave that to come to room temperature, and then I'm gonna put it in the fridge to get it nice and cold and thick. So while the cake's cool and that custard sets, I'm gonna make the raspberry jelly Italian meringue frosting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is dissolve some jelly powder. And I've got here a sachet of raspberry jelly powder. You could experiment with blackberry, blackcurrant, strawberry, orange maybe. What jelly powder would you use in this Italian meringue frosting? Let me know in the comments section. So in with the powder. And then I'm gonna dissolve that in a little bit of water. Right, so the jelly's mixed and set to one side. I've got here the four egg whites that I saved from when I made the custard earlier. And I'm gonna pop those into my stand mixer fitted with whisk attachment. So the egg whites go in there. Now it's time to make the syrup. And the syrup is what's gonna cook the egg whites to make a stiff, gorgeous Italian meringue. So into my pan, I'm gonna add my caster sugar and some water. And I'm gonna bring that to a boil. And I need to cook it to soft ball stage which is 118 degrees Celsius. So it's quite important that you've got an instant read digital thermometer for this. But what's quite important is when the syrup is boiling, don't stir it because it could crystallize. When that does reach 118 degrees, I'm gonna to want to add that jelly mixture straight to the pan. So have your dissolved jelly handy and ready. Come in, all right? and then over to the mixer. So I'm gonna get the egg whites mixing on a medium speed, and then carefully pour that jelly syrup into the mixture. And then once all of the syrup's included, I'm gonna whack it up to full speed. So after a good five, 10 minutes, you can see that this is beautifully stiff and glossy, the perfect Italian meringue. Look at that, and the beautiful pink color from that raspberry jelly is amazing, and the smell, let me tell you, is so fruity and fabulous, it's untrue. Now, that's the Italian meringue, but it ain't an Italian meringue buttercream just yet because there ain't no butter in it. So, I'm gonna take handfuls, little handfuls of the butter, just squelch it up, and then throw it into the mixture. As I add the butter to this, the mixture will deflate. It'll start to look a bit split and horrible and gross. That is how Italian meringue buttercream is made. So if you get to that stage and you have a bit of a panic attack and you think, oh, I can't carry on, I've got to phone a friend, don't worry, just carry on. Because when you've added all the butter and just let it whisk a little bit, it'll thicken up, emulsify, and go gloriously moussey. Okay, buttercream's done. The cakes should be cool now. The custard should be set. My jar of jam is about to be opened with a pop. So all that's left to do now is assemble the cake. I've put one of my cakes onto a cake turntable. And then what I'm gonna do, just so I've got everything prepared, is get my custard, which is now set. And I'm gonna scrape that. I'm gonna scrape that into a bowl. So I've got my custard ready, my cake's ready, buttercream's there. I'm gonna put a little bit of the buttercream into a piping bag because before I put the jam and custard onto the cake, 
I want to make a little buttercream margin just so the jam and custard don't spread out. Gently, carefully. Perfect. Now for the jam, I've found, I've discovered this beautiful raspberry pink gin and elderflower jam. So I need three tablespoons of this jam on each layer of cake and then just a bit of custard on top of that jam. Again, try not to put too much on, as tempting as that may be. Perfect. I'm going to add the next layer of cake, basically repeat that whole process. And then finally, on with the final layer of cake. So all I'm going to do, just to make the cake extra level, this is an optional stage, just so you know, but I like to do this because it makes the cake much neater and easier to decorate, is slice off just the, the edge, just to make it straight all the way down. So with a, a bread knife, a straight eye and self-belief. And please don't worry, I know that looks like a lot of offcuts, but you could just mash those together with leftover buttercream to make cake pops and form them into little balls and then dip them into chocolate. Or you could just enjoy them with a bit of leftover custard. They won't go to waste, so don't worry. So now that I've got the cake trimmed and looking lovely and neat, I'm going to apply what's called a crumb coat. So it's a very thin layer of buttercream all the way around the edge and top of the cake just to stick any crumbs in place. And this doesn't need to be in any way, shape or form neat or perfect. This is going to be a cake of many processes and stages where it's going to look a bit gross, a bit gnarly, but enjoy the ride guys. And then I'm going to pop that back in the fridge for 20 minutes or you could put it in the freezer if you've got enough room for a good five, 10 minutes, just to firm everything up. Right, this is chilled down quite nicely now. It's had a good 20 minutes. So it's firm, it's stable, and it's ready to be completed. Nice thick layer of buttercream now. This is looking pretty good, but of course it's not there, don't worry. Is that it, John? Is that what you're thinking? So I want to just neaten this up a little bit. So I'm gonna grab a flat, sharp angled thing. You could either use the base of a square cake tin or like I'm doing a bench scraper. As long as it's flat and right angled, it'll be fine. And all I'm gonna do is just hold that against the cake turntable and just scrape the icing to make it a little bit, just a tiny bit smoother. If as you're working with the cake and putting the buttercream on, you find it's getting a bit loose or a little bit unruly, just whack it in the fridge or freezer for 10, 15 minutes. And that'll firm it up and it'll be much easier to get a nice, neat finish on it. You might be happy with the cake just like that, you know, unassuming and confident in its simple beauty, but I quite want to make this more honorable, more of a crown. So to do that, I'm gonna give it a jaggedy crown edge. So you take a little lump of buttercream on the end of your palette knife and you spread it down, just random sized lumps all the way around the edge. Once you've done the entire top edge, just take your palette knife again, smooth that edge, and then take the palette knife edge and just kind of press it down on the inside this time. And that'll just neaten that rough crown up ever so slightly. I'm gonna finish this with a little bit of gold luster just on the outside tip of that crown. Now I can't just apply the luster in its dry form because it'll go everywhere. So I'm gonna reconstitute the luster, which means wet it to you and me, with a little bit of lemon juice or vodka. I, I use vodka because it evaporates more quickly. And then just on that top rough edge, give it a lovely golden shine. Look at that. Perfect. Isn't that lovely? Quite modern, quite new, but definitely a cake fit for a queen. And if you decide to have a go at making this cake at home, please do let us know how you get on down in the comments. And also don't forget to hit the notification bell and click the subscribe button. And I think now I have earned a very hearty slice of this beautiful cake. Would you look at that? A slice of cake fit for a queen. <laughs>